Hello all, in this video we will learn about the informal design guidelines for relation schemas. There are four informal guidelines that is used to measure the determine the quality of relation schema design. The first one is making sure that the semantics of the attributes is clear in the schema, reducing the redundant information in tuples, reducing the null values in the tuples and disallowing the possibility of generating spurious tuples. Let us understand about each design guidelines. The first one is imparting clear semantics to attributes in relations. What is semantics? The semantics of a relation refers to its meaning resulting from the interpretation of attribute values in a tuple. Now let us explain this with an example. The, em the employee table consists of E name. What is E name? It's an employee name. And it consists of SSN. It's a social security number. And B date. It's a birth date. And address. And the number of, and the, number of the department uh, where the employee works. That is called as department number. D number. Yes. Uh, as per the guidelines 1. Design the relation schema so that it is easy to explain its meaning. Do not combine attributes from multiple entity types and relationship types into a single relation. If the relation corresponds to a mixture of multiple entities and relationships, semantic ambiguities will result and the relation cannot be easily explained. The summary of guideline 1 is we are not supposed to combine the attributes of multiple entities. So this may lead to redundant or it may lead to anomalies. Yes, this example shows the violation of guideline 1. As you can see here, so this, this schema, it, it, it is, the attributes in this schema is nothing but the combination of employee and the department. Okay, as you can see, uh, we have all the information attributes of the employee and all the attributes of department, department number, department name and the manager of the department. Yes, and uh, even here, we, it's a combination of employee and the project. Uh, yes, we have SSN, project number, hours, employee name, project name and project location. So this is a combination of for two attributes of two tables. Yes, redundant information in tuples and update anomalies. So what happens if we just combine the attributes of two tables? So here, uh, the one goal of schema design is to minimize the storage space used by the base relation. So let us let me consider this example where we combine the attributes of employee and department table. So what this leads to redundancy as you can see in the image this leads to redundancy. There are lots of duplicate values. Well there are only five rows. In the five rows as you can see here these these data are repeated. So which means it's a redundancy. It's a wastage of space. It's a duplicate values. Okay. So if you combine the attributes of tables, there is a chance that it may lead to redundancy. And also it leads to some of the anomalies, update anomalies. So the update anomalies can be classified into insertion anomalies, deletion anomalies and modification anomalies. Yes, let us understand about insertion anomalies. To insert a new employee tuple into employee department, let's say we have an example, same example here, employee department. Now suppose if I want to insert a new employee to this table, we must include either the attribute values for the department that the employee works for or nulls. Yes. If I, if I try to know, for example, uh, if I try to insert a new department where there is no employees, if I try to insert a new department, let's say I just want to insert a, a one department called as data science department and uh, data science department where there are no employees in it. In that case, I need to uh, all these values, all these uh, attributes will be null because there are uh, it's a new department and there are no employees, so all the rest of the attributes will be null. 
yes so and also not only null not only that you can even the ssn which is a primary key that will be also null so it's a violation of entity integrity as you can see in the second statement it is difficult to insert a new department that has no employees uh, the only way to do this place this is to place null values in the attributes for employee so this we can assess in it's in primary key this primary key cannot have cannot be null value so this violates the entity integrity for the employee department because SSN is its primary key. So this is one of the example of insertion anomalies. The main reason for this anomalies is just if you combine the attributes of the two tables. That is here we have combined the attributes of employee and department. Yes, let us understand about the deletion anomalies. If we delete from employee department and employee tuples that happens to represent the last employee working for a particular department the information concerning that department is lost from the database now let us say uh, in this example there are five rows and let us assume we have these two employees that is Zilea and Veles uh, if they if they if you delete the employees or if they leave the job uh, let us assume they left the job and I want to delete this from the database their name from the database so in that case even the department name will also be deleted. So in the department administration, there are only two. Uh, there are only two uh, two rows. So if I just delete the employees, so the corresponding, the department also be deleted. So which means there are uh, there is no such department exists in the company. So again, this is also an anomaly. So these problems occur in department relations since tuples are stored separately. Okay. Yes, the data of the department data itself is lost. So this is one of the uh, anomalies for the deletions. Again, if you just combine the attributes of two tables, uh, uh, this leads to this deletion anomalies, insertion anomalies. And also we'll understand about modification anomalies. Yes. Now, in department, if we change the value of one of the attributes of a particular department, say the manager of the department phi, we must update the tuples of all employees who work in that department. Otherwise, the data will become inconsistent. Now, if I just, I just want to change the value of the department. Let's say I just want to change uh, 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 the manager information here. Manager of, I just want to update the tuples of who work in the department of five and just want to make some money, modification. But you have to update it for all those all the tuples where the department number is five okay that's what it says in the employee department if you change the value of one of the attributes of a particular department i just change one of the values of a particular uh, department the manager of the department five say we must update the tuples of employees who work in that department otherwise the data will become inconsistent if i just change any any tuples of the of, of this particular uh, um, particular row i need to change modify it for the second and also it for the last row as well so otherwise the database will will become inconsistent yes if you fail to update some tuples the same department will be shown to have two different values for manager in different employee tuples which would be wrong yes so that's it about those anomalies. Uh, we'll see about the guidelines too. We have already learned about the guideline 1 and this is about the guideline 2. Uh, design the base relation schema so that no insertion, deletion or modification anomalies are present in the relation. So we need to design the relation schema in such a way that there should be no insertion, deletion or modification anomalies. If any anomalies are present, note them clearly and make sure that the programs that update the database will operate correctly. Yes, the main the root cause is just if I just combine the attributes of multiple tables, so it may lead to uh, uh, this anomalies. Yeah, third guidelines. Um, third uh, the guidelines is about the null values in tuples. Null values can waste space at the storage level and also lead to problems with understanding the meaning of the attributes. Null can have multiple interpretations such as the attribute does not apply to this tuple. For example, if we have a visa status may not apply to students. Yes. So this attribute does not apply to that particular tuple. 
the attribute value second type is the attribute value for this tuple is unknown for example the date of birth may be unknown for an employee and the third type is the value is known but absent for example home or phone number for an employee may exist but may not be available and recorded yet so this is some of the cases where uh, we have we can have uh, multiple interpretations for uh, null values so what guideline 3 says so avoiding placing attributes uh, in a base relation whose values may frequently be null so we need to try to avoid null values in the tables if nulls are unavoidable make sure that they apply in an exception case only and do not apply to a majority of tuples in the relation so this is what guidelines 3 says we need to avoid null values in the relations yes the final one is the generation of spurious tuples uh, yes, let, let us consider let us uh, uh, consider the two relation schema as employee location and employee project. Okay, now suppose if you perform a natural join operation on employee project and employee location, the result produced may may produce more tuples than the original set of tuples. So these additional tuples which we get is called as spurious tuples. Uh, so these spurious tuples are marked by asterisk. Let us take an example here. We have two tuples, employee location and employee project. Now suppose if I join these two tuples. Now to join these two tuples, we use project location. What is common? Project location. Yes, if we join these two tuples uh, using this project location, this leads to spurious tuples, which means that data is invalid. As you can see here, uh, see, uh, many employees might work in Belair or many employees might work in Sugarland or many employees might work in Mangalore. See, how can I join these two tuples based on the uh, uh, Now, if I join these two tuples based on the location, the resultant relation is, is invalid. As you can see, there is, uh, you can see here, uh, the asterisk, the symbol, the row which is asterisk is called as purest tuples, which is, which is invalid. As you can see, the first row, uh, that is uh, the first row, the employee name is Smith. And even with the same SSN, we have employee name called as English. So this is invalid. So the, any, the row which is uh, marked as uh, asterisk is an spurious tuple, which is an invalid tuple. So this is caused by just by if you combine the two attributes or join the, sorry, join the two tables using uh, a non-primary key or non-foreign key. Now we'll see what guideline 4 says, design relation schema so that uh, they can be joined with equality conditions on attributes that are, that are appropriately related to pro, uh, primary key or foreign key pairs in a way that guarantees that no spurious tuples are generated. Avoid relations that contain matching attributes that are not combination because joining on such attributes may produce spurious tuples. Yes. Avoid relations that containing matching attributes that are not foreign key and primary key. As you can see here, project location is is not primary key, neither uh, foreign key. So if we use such uh, uh, attributes to join the two tables, this leads to spurious tuples, which is invalid. Yes. Yeah, that's it about those informal design guidelines. Yes, thank you.